Good day, fellow. Good day, fellow. Setsu is back. Today, my fellow, I just want us to do this concept of vertical projectile. Vertical projectile. You see now, I just want us to do this new concept now of what? Vertical projectile. Firstly, before I can even continue with this concept, I just want us to understand this key concept. Firstly, we have the projectile. We also have free fall. Free fall this side. Then we also have projectile this side. Then now, if I were to define the concept of projectile, I would say, it is an object, an object, which is under now, which is under the influence, influence of gravity. See, the projectile is an object which is under the influence of what? Of gravity. Secondly, we have the concept of free fall. This one has to do now with what? The motion. See? Which is under. Which is under the influence. Influence of gravity. Gravity. You see now. As for free fall. It has to do with motion which is under the influence of what? Of gravity. Both terms include the term now, gravity. Bear in mind that the gravitational acceleration is always given by G, 9.8 meter per second. Let me just say per second squared. It always acts down what you see this is a value of what of gravitational acceleration another thing that i just want to highlight to you is that do you still remember when we were doing grade 10 we emphasized the two concept which was the vector quantity two physical quantity which was the vector we also did what the scalar quantities scalar quantities do you still remember what we said about the vector we said that the vector it has both what magnitude magnitude as well as direction you see the scalar quantity only consists of what of magni magnitude magnitude you see now then the gravitational acceleration the value of g now is going to represent what the vector quantity why do we say so because it consists of what magnitude as well as what direction you see example for example we are going to have gravitational acceleration for this one gravitational 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 acceleration acceleration you see another example that we are going to have i don't have much space over there another example let me write it here let me write it here Another example that we are going to have is displacement. Displace, sorry. Displacement. We also have what? Velocity. Velocity. You see? Those represent what? Vector quantities. Then under scalar, we have what? We have time also have something like distance you see distance you see 
and speed if i were to include speed as well you see then you just need to know that this i vectors quantity this side we have what scalar quantity now let us continue but i'm going to erase because i don't have much space let me erase quickly okay under the concept of vertical projectile we have the following equations we call them the equations of motions we have this one which is given by f final final velocity initial velocity plus gravitational acceleration multiplied by time we also have this one final velocity initial velocity plus two gravitational acceleration then displacement see then another formula that we have is this one change in position displacement we have v initial time plus one over two gravitational acceleration time squared you see lastly let me write it this one we have change in y which is displacement open bracket fine let me say final velocity plus initial velocity we divide by two this side we have time then we have four formulas of what of equations of motions you see you just need to know that here we have final velocity initial velocity gravitational acceleration time same final velocity initial velocity gravitational acceleration this one displacement you see they are the same then now what i'm going to do is i'm going to consider a symmetrical motion let's say if now i have a ball like this a symmetrical motion let's say somehow we allow this we project this ball upwards up until let's say it reaches point b over there let's say this one is a let's call this one b and let's call this one c we have a c metrical symmetrical motion over here from a to b b till c you see then now there are some concepts that you need to know let me just erase here a little bit there are concepts that you just need to know then at b we have a maximum height maximum height you see at b we have maximum height then the velocity at maximum will always be zero let me say velocity at maximum you just need to know that it will always be zero meter per second you see then now another thing that you just need to know about this symmetrical motion is that the time it take a ball to move from a till b is same time that it took a ball to move from b till c you see t a b will always be equals to t b c somehow t a b will always be equals to t b c then the total time of the entire motion will be given now by T A B plus T B C. You see? Then at maximum, you just need to know that the velocity will always be zero. The time from A to B will always be equal to time from B to C. You see? Now, let us take this example let's say if we had something like this now 
Let me just erase. Let me just erase here. Let me just erase here. Yeah, like this. Let's say if I were to give you the I to be, let's say, 15. Then I also uh, give you, we already know that the acceleration is going to be 9.8. See? Then let's say I decide to ask you this question to say now. Determine the time that it takes a ball from A up until it reaches the maximum height. Let's say I decide to ask you this question to find the time it takes for this ball to reach the maximum. How are you going to calculate or how are you going to figure out the time it takes for this ball to reach B? It's so simple. Firstly, we need to decide the direction. Let us say that everything that goes up, we consider it to be positive. Everything that goes down, we consider it to be negative. Now, at this point, we can then do what? Figure out the time at B. You see? We know that at maximum, our V final now, because we said that this one is V initial, our V final is going to be zero. You see? From these given equations, let us try to tick those quantities which they already gave us. We have V final, we also have V initial, we also have gravitational acceleration. Then the question wants us to calculate what the time. Then it's so simple, we are going to consider the first one. You see, because it has time and these three quantities. Since that the gravitational acceleration always acts downwards, we are going to put negative just next to 9.8. Then now let us substitute. We have, uh, let me just write here. We have V final, VI plus GT. Our V final is zero. Then we have positive 15 plus open bracket minus 9.8 time. We take 15 to the other side. Going to be minus 15, 9.8. This is our time. Let's see what are we going to get. Negative 15 divided by negative, sorry, it's negative over here, I forgot. 9.8 we get let me run my answer to three decimal places 1 comma 5 3 1 seconds you see 3 1 seconds then it takes us 1 comma 5 3 1 seconds for this ball to reach B you see to reach B. This one's from A till B. A, B, you see, from A till B. Now, how are you going to calculate the time it took for this ball to reach C? Now it's so simple. We are going to say uh, T total from A up until C is going to be T, A, B, plus T, B, C. This is a symmetrical motion. We said that the time from A to B will always be equal to time from B to C. You see, somehow we are going to multiply this value by 2. Or you can just say 1.531 plus 1.531. Then it's going to be our total time then we have 1.531 plus 
1.53y which is now 3.06 toward seconds you see now we have the total time let me write t total is 3.062 from A to B, we got 1,531. You see? Second. Then now, our total time is 3,06. From A to B, it's 1,531. Now, let me ask you this question now. Let us try to figure out the let us try to figure out now with this information let us try to figure out the velocity at c from a till c how are you going to determine the value of c especially v final at c then this one it was v at a v initial v initial at a we want to figure out now the V final is C. Let us use this equation, which is going to be now V I, sorry, V final, but where now at C going to be V I at A take A plus G T. See, V final is C. Our V initial was 15 plus negative 9.8 the total from a up until c we got 3,062 let's see what are we going to get let me put my calculator somewhere here we have 15 plus negative 9.8 we also have 3,06 we get negative 15 let me just round this number to the whole number it's going to be v final c negative 15 meter per second you see then let me just take you back again now do you realize something about v initial and also v final we have the same value but the only difference now is that for v initial it goes into the value of v initial is positive why because it moves upwards you see the value of initial it moves upwards but the value of c final velocity at c we got negative answer why because this one it moves downward but both of these values they will always be the same for the symmetrical motion but the only difference will be that now for c it will act downwards for a it will act upwards because this ball it goes upwards as we go upwards the velocity increases up until it reaches zero then from zero, it starts to increase now in a negative direction up until it reaches 15 downward. You see, that's another key that you must know for the symmetrical motion. That the V initial for A will always be equals to V final for C, but now in opposite direction. You see? Then now, let us figure out the height from A up until B. We already know the V, V final at C, we got minus 15. Now we want to figure out the distance from A till B. How are we going to answer that one so simple let me erase somewhere here 
let me erase somewhere here then okay with the calculator like this do have then let's check uh do we have the final velocity at b yes do we have v initial from a yes do we have gravitational acceleration yes we want the height from a till b we can then take this one say v final squared v i squared plus 2g change in y see then our v final we got 0 squared our v initial with 15 squared plus 2 don't forget to include negative 9.8 change in y from a to b let me just indicate the a to b then from here <clears throat> let's see 15 squared what are we going to get 15 bracket squared we get 0 this side 225 then let me see 2 multiply by negative 9.8 we get negative 196 changing y a b then let us take this value to this side 225 plus 2 negative 19.6 changing y a b c we can then divide this number by 19.6 so it about the the noise aside we have 225 divided by 19.6 we are going to get our height is going to be 11 comma let me say 4 8 meters you see our height let me say change in y a to b we get 11,48 meters sorry let me say meter per second i forgot to include units units meter per second square you see then the height from a to b we get 11,48 now let's say now i decide to ask you this question to say draw the velocity time graph now i think we already have almost everything let us try to draw the velocity time graph you see it's so simple let me just erase here velocity see okay somewhere here let me just do like this for this motion velocity this side is going to be velocity this side meter per second oh sorry let me just erase a bit this side is going to be velocity in meter per second this side is going to be our time in second you see then draw a line like this then let's see for our v initial bear in mind v initial the time is zero we got what 15 we are going to say plus 15 at v initially you see then let's see uh the time it took for this wall to reach the maximum we got 1.5 at maximum when our velocity was zero it was 1.531 the velocity was zero somewhere here we have zero then when our velocity was negative 15 our final velocity at C, the time it took for this entire motion, it was 3,0. Somewhere here is going to be 
0 let's say 62 then we got the final velocity to be at c negative 15 you see then if i were to join these three points we are going to get something like this for this motion you see then if i were to ask you to draw acceleration versus time graph this one is so simple this side we are going to have what gravitational acceleration which is meter per second squared sorry squared this side we have seconds you see as for gravitational acceleration time this one is so simple because you just need to go to a negative 9.8 somewhere let's say it's somewhere there then it took us 3,062 from A till C. Took us 3,062 seconds. Then the acceleration never changed. It was constant throughout. This is an acceleration. And that's our time graph. Then let us check the position now versus time graph sorry about the light then the position this side in meter let me see change in y see meters this side is going to be time in second you see initially everything was zero you see the height was zero as well at this point then now we calculated the height from a to b we got 11 c changing y from a to sorry meters we got 11 let's say 11 somewhere there 11 comma 48 then the time at maximum from A to B we got 1.531 you see from A to B we got 1.531 then it's going to be something like this then it came back downwards from B to C then the total time for that motion was 3.06 then you are going to draw something like this you see here we have the the velocity versus time graph here we have gravity sorry gravitational acceleration versus time graph here we have the displacement versus what time graph for the symmetrical motions i thank you and enjoy your day